blue is charged to 90 percent and um it's a nice sunny day out there even though it's chilly i think the high is around 50 right now i just pulled blue out of the garage so um the temperature from 60 will be falling and i am uh, off to enjoy the pretty sunshine and run some errands our friend Kyle and Out of Spec Motoring, they're up in the mountains today enjoying uh, the pretty fall colors and the tail of the dragon. This is about as curvy and much fall colors as I'm going to see today, but I'm going to definitely enjoy it. I mean, I do get to do this nice curve every day. The only problem is, is that, um, you know, the speed limit here is 35 and you just can't really enjoy it. So over here on Old Stage Road, Field Stream Farms has set up a festival of lights. And uh, it looks like the kind of thing where you park and get on a tractor and go through the display. I don't remember seeing that before and um, I think I'd really like to go check it out this year since it's a new new thing. Ruby's account just caught a shiny Meowth. Doesn't look a lot different than the regular one. Um, the ears are more red I guess. Um, I'll have to see how it looks when you evolve it to the Persian. There's my snuggle buddies staying warm. Hey Donnie. Hey pretty girl. I come home from running my errands and uh, Dawn's hopped in the car with me and we're going to go run a few more errands, I guess. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Get out a little bit. It's such a pretty fall color day. Yep. I, um, I felt a little like I might be coming down with another cold. Just been trying to s stay in the car and keep warm mostly. Um, but I certainly am up for driving around and enjoying the sunset and some more fall colors. Right. I had uh, Don as part of our drive swing us over here by Sharon Harris and I got to tell you I got to question if it's operational right now which is really weird because there's like absolutely no steam coming out of the cooling tower and given the fact that it's 47 degrees out there there ought to be some steam showing up ought to be a lot of steam showing up as a matter of fact so what's what's going on we'll have to go see if we can figure it out it was unexpected. So, um, Don wanted to give you guys his thoughts on the pickup truck reveal, the cyber truck, what he right. thinks is going to happen. And he's been thinking about it for a few days and kind of now's a good time. So shoot, Donnie. <laughs> okay. So, um, there's a lot, you know, Elon is saying um, that the, the truck's going to be very uh, different, radical, uh, um, really different than anything we've ever seen or probably could even think of. So uh, I I took that to mean that he's not expecting the typical pickup truck crowd to... Uh, like the truck. In fact, uh, I'm my prediction, which is what this video is about. I predict that the overall media is going to make fun of the truck. They're going to laugh at it. That they're going to interview truck guys, pick up truck drivers, and you're going to hear things like, "I would never have one of those." You know, you you couldn't pay me to have one. They're going to. It's going to be radically. Uh, they're going to reject Elon's vision of a pickup truck. Uh, I would tell you 98%, 95 to 98% of the people are going to hate it, which means only 2 to 5% are going to think it's cool, like it. I'm not talking about Tesla people, they're all going to like it, but I'm talking about the you know, North Carolina is full of pickup trucks, and if you went up and asked, um, a hundred pickup truck drivers, it, 
and showed them a picture of this pickup truck, I'm saying 95% of them would probably thumbs down it. All right, so here's where I'm going with this. I saw an interview on AutoLine Detroit by Bob Lutz where he was reminiscing about the Dodge Ram pickup truck. And he said they did, at the time that he took over the Ram truck in the early 90s, uh, Chevrolet and Ford had basically 90, over 90% 90 of the market between the two of them. And that Dodge Ram had single digit and it was low single digits. And they went out and um, drew up a new pickup truck. And they brought in focus groups and 75% of the people hated it, the Dodge Ram pickup truck. But 25% of the people liked it. And what happened was uh, Lutz made the decision that that's, that was the design that they're going to go with. And that's the one where it has the, um, um, you know, it looks like the old trucks, the old uh, 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 semi-trucks back in the 40s and the 50s. Uh, it's the style they're still kind of using today where the fenders are lower, the hood's higher. And he went with it and he basically said uh, in the first within the first two years they had got they had gotten close to 30 percent of market share so they went from low single digits uh, to uh, double uh, double digits and basically they were a contender and they have been ever since so what I'm trying to say is even if 98 percent 99 percent of the people hate it all we gotta have is one percent of the people like the truck Tesla cannot build enough electric pickup trucks to even satisfy 1% of the pickup truck market. They probably do a, maybe a, on their best day, wildest dream, do maybe a tenth of 1%. So they're, the Tesla pickup truck's going to sell like hotcakes. They're going to sell everyone they can build. So now for my predictions of what it's going to look like. I think... Um, uh, the cyber thing, I think it's going to be a really far forward. It's going to look like the old um, VW bus. In other words, the cab's going to be way forward. It won't spend a lot of cab. Uh, I think the biggest differences in conventional trucks is that the truck's going to have a bed that can be raised or lowered. In fact, I even go out as far as to say the bed's going to be able to get down where you can literally, uh, it'll tilt and you will be able to wheel your cargo onto the bed and it slow down. So it's going to be like a small flat uh, bed type, um, you know, like uh, the tow trucks are flat beds. Um, I think it's going to have a telescoping bed. Uh, I think that the bed um, between the cab and the bed, that part will extend. Uh, in other words, the bed will move away from the cab and the part between the cab and the front of the, the bed, that gap uh, will um, have a, a little side panel will pull out of the bed and the floor will be available there because it'll probably be the top of the battery packed uh, so that you will be able to have an adjustable bed from maybe it'll be a six foot bed with a press, press of a button It'll grow two feet, so the bed will be then eight eight feet, basically hang out two feet further past the rear wheels. Uh, possibly the rear wheels could almost tuck in completely, um, uh, meaning go well up into the, the sides of the bed, because I think the motors, there's no drive shaft, there's no uh, uh, traditional rear end, none of that is back there. It's just going to be drive motors. So, uh, I'm that's the biggest thing I think is the way that you handle cargo obviously it's going to have a inverter on it that can power hand, hand tools and I think it's going to be a serious inverter I think they're going to take the inverter out of the power wall which is a five kilowatt inverter and they're that's what they're going to use to power uh, uh, pull energy from the battery to power tools because with a five kilowatt inverter you know you can run any power saw you want uh, you know you can you can do something serious you could probably run uh, an air compressor 
uh, you know, you see these trucks driving around with air compressors. You could see these trucks driving around with welders on it. That a five kilowatt inverter can run those types of things. So um, that's that's my prediction. Is uh, you know, it's going to be cab forward. It's going to have a very elaborate, fancy bed that does things that traditional pickup trucks cannot do. Of course, it's going to have a high uh, tow rating. Uh, we'll have to see. That sounds interesting. I hadn't given any thought, but you're right. No muffler, no drivetrain, none of these other things. It gives you some right. well, flexibility in the middle or the back of the vehicle that you don't have well, with a regular pickup. Well, Tesla does air suspension. So if you had uh, air suspension or maybe even, I don't want to say hydraulic, but let's just say you had servo motors, you, you, could, you could literally lower it down to where the battery pack is sitting on the ground. And then, I mean, so now it's the height of whatever, how the bed height is the battery height plus a little bit more. And then, of course, the bed. So it could be a, literally a foot off the ground. So if you had a bed that could extend two feet, telescope two feet out, you could just tip it up a little bit, uh, just a few degrees. And that, especially with the tailgate lit, uh, lower down you'd have like a four foot ramp on the end of your truck and you could easily load lawn mowers lawn mowers other stuff up there well and it wouldn't be such a, a radical angle that uh, you'd have to use a winch or something to pull the things on so and then of course it could tip down and and go now i don't know that that's going to be the standard uh obviously but you know, uh, I, I think that he's going to try to meet the $50,000 mark, but I think that the top of the truck's probably going to be well over $100,000. Uh, you know, there's going to be variations on the truck. Uh, I, I think that they, they probably are going to day one announce a uh, panel van. I think that this van's going to, this truck's going to come in a couple configurations, and if you want a panel van type uh, thing, I think day one, because Tesla's all, uh, Elon specifically said he'd love to have the Mercedes Sprint van or something like that. Uh, Jeff Bezos just bought a hundred thousand uh, Rivian vans. I'm telling you, the van thing would be a big seller, and I could definitely see uh, that being a version that they announce with this uh, announcement. And he, Elon said that you know he's going to go more traditional after a while. And I'm not worried that 99% of the people are going to hate it. Because all you got to do is have that one guy show up on a job site with an electric Tesla pickup truck. And the bed lowers down and he can walk on, walk off. They don't have to do anything. And it's like the other guy's going to say, well, that's, that's kind of handy. Well, that's kind of neat. And then maybe one of those guys buys it. That's, that's what I meant. It's, it's just like everything else. You know, you had the first one on the block, the Tesla, and now there's entire neighborhoods with Teslas. I, it's it's sort of how it's going to spread with the pickup truck. I really think the fact that maybe 75% of the people always hate it. Maybe that's the case. But the point is, there's 25%, and that's more than Tesla will ever be able to build. I mean, in, in the near future. Uh, I mean, for the next 10 years, they can't meet 20... You know, they if they gained... Uh, uh, 33 percent market share in, uh, in the pickup truck space in, in 10 years that would be a horrendous task for them to build enough batteries and other things to, to build that many vehicles so what I would like to see I'm thinking of the Tesla family how does the Tesla family want to go supercharger to supercharger well we found out that uh, a lot of families want to be able to camp in their Tesla. They want to be able to spend the night at the supercharger uh, or some other location with like an air mattress in the back. What I would like to see is a tent um, that is made to fit in the back of the Tesla pickup truck. So you go on a trip with your family from a camping perspective and you get to the campsite and you haul out the cooler and the lawn chairs and a couple other things and then somehow you attach this easy to fit to the bed 
tent so it basically becomes your off of the ground sleeping location and oh by the way you can pump air conditioning and heat from the truck into the tent area without it you know leaking outside or whatever so i see the tesla family that wants to be able to go on these trips and oh by the way they have their little mini house camping tent uh, with them while they're while they're going I think that would be cool because we've definitely seen that people like it that they can camp in the Tesla and they have heating and air conditioning and a mosquito free environment well I think it can be extended to the bed of the pickup truck Don's in project mode, and to complete our date night, we're gonna go to Home Depot. Home Depot. That's right. <laughs> I get to look at the Christmas decorations, and we get to plan out Black Friday purchases. Because you know they got all that stuff out. Last year they did a few weeks in advance, and then they just repositioned it a little bit on Black Friday. My goodness, so there are a lot of trees to choose from. And more trees and more trees so they got smart now instead of having a floodlight looking light in your front yard you have a present or a bulb that one's bright that one's bright i think you need both the bulb and the present the snowflakes and the let it snow at the yes. same time i think you need both of yeah. them so <laughs> 30 bucks a piece that's the you know, 120 bucks no that's 60 bucks where'd you get it's 120 out of 30 and 30. Oh, you want, well, I saw four of them, but yeah, so yeah, if you just got two of them, it's 60. So maybe after thanks after Christmas, you can get them for um, you know, sale. $9.95 a piece. <laughs> well, we do have this talk every year. Johnny and I put out the cords, and then Don has to come around behind us and make sure we did it safely. Wow. This is a thing to keep water out of where you connect it to extension cords. So I guess I'm wondering what's the difference between now and Black Friday? I think last year they crossed all over some of the prices and stuck up cheaper prices. But it's basically all laid out, all the things that we usually look at on Black Friday. Keurig at Home Depot, but this is the only one they have to choose from right now. Um, that's new. Yeah. So right now Don and I are asking ourselves the question as to why we didn't leave the heat on while we went yeah. to Home Depot. <laughs> Uh, it's a little chilly in the car. Don dropped me off at Walmart to uh, pick up a few things, mostly cat food. And uh, you can spot those cat eyes coming to pick you up from anywhere in the parking lot. I like. You know, I have to say that Don is a really good sport. Almost always. Oh. I went into Walmart and I took my backpack purse with me and uh, um, that had the key fob. Yes. And since this is a loaner car, number one, we only have one key fob right. and number two, Don doesn't have access to the car on his phone. Well, neither do I. Right. And on top of that, Don forgot his phone tonight. So he had to carefully sit the car out there and drive on a flat surface away from everybody. So it wouldn't lock up on him and he'd be able to come and get me when I came out. Yeah. And um, I wasn't in there forever, but I was in there for 15 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so I'm sorry, Donnie. It's all right, sweetie. I found a place where she wouldn't roll. I had to put <laughs> hill hold on because after five minutes, it puts it in park. And without the key, as soon as it goes in park, that's it. You don't get to move anymore. Right. Well, the worst thing is, is you. I told him he could have just parked and come in and found me. That wouldn't have been too hard to do. That no, Walmart's I, not that big, and you right. know, you basically know. I looked at the Hot Wheels. I went to the cat food. Uh, I looked at the Christmas stuff. I mean, you know, how hard could I have been to find in there? Wouldn't have been hard at all, sweetie. 